Right, now, 60 diesels. So what we have been doing is we have been on the Ebays buying treasure again. So this is my obviously my favourite Mercedes engine. This is an OM651, the not so good one out of the newer later Sprinter. This engine is like 17 or 18 and has not done very many of the miles. So this was advertised on Evil Bay. Badly, it just said Mercedes engine um, in Froome. Well, the start bit of 150 quid. The rest of it is all lying over there. So we have the twin turbos. This is a Bluetech one. We have the twin turbos, all the manifolds, swell fat, the EGR cooler, everything is over there. Um, so the story behind this, we got this off of, a, um, off of one of those mobile hydraulic pipe companies in Froome. And um, one of their drivers, as you will see, the sump is quite shiny compared to the rest of it. Now, he was in Bristol, and apparently he drove over one of those triangular road sign things and poked a big hole in the bottom of it. He realised and turned it off. So it was recovered to the garage and had, we are assuming as Mercedes, because this is a genuine Mercedes part bolted to the bottom of it, um, and had a new sump and sort of upper sump tray thing fitted. At which point it started, was fine, they gave it back. Now, two weeks later, apparently it literally stopped. And um, to save any pissing around, they'd had another one of their vans that had had a bit of an argument with a lorry and lost. And um, same year, same van, so they literally tore the engine out of the van that had had a bit of a lorry-based dinger and threw it in the one that had had a bit of an incident involving a road sign. And then basically this got left in a shed for three years. So we reckon it's done about 40,000 miles. And um, it is all here because I think they took it apart and stripped the wiring harness off of it for some reason. I didn't ask. Probably between blue efficiency and non-blue efficiency stop-stop. Um, and then just left it in the shed. Now it was advertised, said Mercedes engine, knocked the sump off of it two weeks later, went wobbly, um, which we assume was seized. So I bought it as a mechanically seized unit because over there I have another one of these off of a 14 plate one that someone put petrol in and it didn't like that. So the, obviously that will have trashed the injectors. This one came with some injectors. They're good. We know that because obviously it was running and um, we'll send them off to be tested anyway. And that one over there melted some pistons, which damaged the block. So I've got perfectly good crank. That's all minty in that one over there. But I've got score lines in number two cylinder. So I thought, 150 quid. If this block is salvageable, even if the bottom end is sea solid, the block shouldn't have hurt. We'll just nick the block. I shall demonstrate something, though. So obviously, this is a big, ugly bar. This is the crank. And as you will see... It's not seized up. It has the compressions on all four cylinders and it's not making any horrible noises. So, what we thought we'd do, see, oh, there is not, it's not even like it's got tight spots or anything. No, nothing particularly bad sounding. So, what I'm gonna do is put this on an engine stand. Upturn it, take this sump off the bottom, and we're going to have a peer inside and see what's happened to it. We have got some stuff to repair because the man managed to drop it off of a pallet. It fell over yesterday, and he has broken the plastic rocker cover and slightly removed the plastic oil fill rousing. All of that we've got. So to whether I have spent £150 on a block, or possibly £150 on a £3,000 engine that might actually be fine and stopped of a sensor failure, a possible injection failure, rather than having ceased solid. Makes loads of sense. Right, time lapse, engine stand. <laughs> right. Ta da! So, Mercedes engine on engine stand. This is going to be a tad exciting turning it over without injuring myself. Are you having fun over there, Capri, and Mr. Fudge? I most certainly am, Mr. Rowe. 
marvellous. I did leave your microphone over there, but you're sort of out of it today, aren't you? You're on the, the yeah. personal times. Yeah. Sad times. Sad times. Doing the Capri. I know you ate it. <laughs> what can you do today? No, la, la, la. Right. <laughs> this is going to go whipping over here at great speed and try and assault me. But we shall get there. As long as it doesn't flip off of its stand, we're all right. Tada! Look at that. So, what we need to do now is we're gonna huzzah. I was having a bit of a wee on the floor. We're gonna huzzah this big bit here off, um, including these bolts in here that are now gonna be an arse to get out. But that's absolutely fine. Let's see what's broken inside. Right, so something in here definitely has a failed. I reckon it may have been driven slightly longer than the nice man from the uh, from the from the pipe people's uh, driver told him it was. I don't think he turned this straight off at all. So it's got quite a lot of the exciting metallic stuff in the bottom of it. Have you seen this, Fudge? You'll want your microphone so the world can hear you. It's over there turned on. Is he on? I think he's on. Hello, YouTubes. You're there, look, yeah. You can just pull the microphone out and that side one out uses a handheld. No, no. All right, you've got to tuck it in your pocket. Stick it in your pocket. So basically, we have got what looks like filing soup going Ooh. on in there. And I found that. That looks like the lump of a big end shell, I just said. I, I'm putting money on the fact that one of them Ooh. ran short of oil, because this, obviously, this is a new sump. Mm -hmm. So this must have been clean when they put it on, so all of that. Oh, nice. It's not a worry, because to be honest, even at the end of the day, it's still what I wanted it to be, because there's another bit of excitingness I've just found there. <laughs> Something there has definitely escaped, hasn't it? I don't know what that is. I don't think I don't know whether that's a shell. Almost looks like a foreign object, doesn't it? Hmm. Mm. Anyway, say, so as I... you can see, people, it's got the metallics in the bottom of it. So I think what I need to do next is quickly huzzah. I mean, there's definitely some bits of metal. Oh, look. Have you found more treasure? There's more. Yeah, that's. I don't know what that is. <coughs> oh, I, think I reckon we... that's the end floaty. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's a thrust washer. A uh, thrust, yeah. Yeah. It could be thrust washer. How did they manage to make a thrust washer fall out of it? Mm. Let me loose at it with me whack a whack a gun. Which I've now put somewhere. There it is. Like a grinding pace for cutting, oh, yes, cutting I mean, back valve, valves. Valve lapping. Valve engine destroying pace. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's fine. We, we can clean all that out. So under here should be, this is going to be full of goo, isn't it? So under here should be the balance shaft carriers. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what died? Might need me big ugly. I could get a smaller bar rather than the 10 foot long one. Give me a second. Okay. You can actually see the um, how clean the pistons are. You see all the machine marks on the pistons and all. I don't think it's done any miles. It's done I think it was any, around it? the thirty or forty thousands. It's just been attacked. Uh, I think as the man who owned it described by a numpty, who I don't think works for them anymore. That sounds like that might be our problem, doesn't it? I think that's number one big end gone. And he does look slightly blue, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, well, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, I have a feeling that they do that anyway. Well, as much slow slop as that. What are you trying to say, that Mercedes didn't make these engines very well? Shall we get Yagadaka in on the end of the big end bolts, right? the main bear, big end bolts. <laughs> See, obviously that 
because these are freeze broken. Oh, quality. Let's see what comes out of here. So how much did he lie to his boss, basically? That ain't bad. Mm. That's good. So it ain't that one. I'm going to have to take it all apart and clean it anyway, but... It's got a little tiny bit of scoring on there, but the crank's good. Yeah. There's no one. Um... No. 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 So a little bit, you can see, something, it's had some stuff through it I reckon but it ain't that one Ooh. let me just talk these back up using this some um, <coughs> <laughs> talk wrench talk wrench well I'll see if I can put it <laughs> back together so it still turns obviously put everything back together these, these caps are freeze broken so yeah they come in and go out one way I have a feeling my piston may have moved down at the moment so I can't get to it there it is so it's not that one it's going to want stripping, but what are the big chunks out of? They can't be half a main. Because all these big end bolts are one, one hit wonders anyway, so. Well, they stretch, stretch so, bolts. Yeah, I got a sad. So, which one did he do? Let's have a look at this back one. I mean, you would have thought furthest away from the oil pump would have been there. I am going to use a ratchet because I do feel a bit bad. Yeah, would bit be. bad yagadaggering on a set of major engines in internals. It's not very professional. Do you remember how excited everyone got when they thought I put a, um, a Robin Reliant engine together with a wacky gun? Yeah. Sometimes people are quite gullible. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. You don't know what you're doing. You shouldn't be allowed anywhere near it. We had to delete that comment. You were like, are you really that daft mm. that you didn't quite understand that I was taking the piss? So I did actually talk the head and the thing bolts up and everything. But You did? But I didn't show the people that I did. No, it's all part of the comedy. I thought it? it was all part of the comedy. What are we going for? Little bit, see? Mm -hmm. Not bad. All right, and that's just what it's picked up from this, you know. I think that's just what it. But what is that? I would say that's a thrust washer. Who did a thrust washer escape? All right, let's just put that back in there. So that's all right. We'll have a look at the next two. That does surprise me, though. The um. Yes, I don't quite know whether that's right or not, but one would assume that this engine. Hmm. I don't know. I don't. I can't remember from the last one. So where did I put? I'm losing everything today. Where had I oh, is. So, let's come round one, see what's broken up. Well, she's definitely got the compressions. And there's nothing nasty looking down in there. Yeah, there it is. Uh-huh. There appears to be a lump of shell. Poker will bring you in here for this. Yes. That's definitely something I oh, can use in my spidey senses, that something there has escaped. There's bring no this. slop in it, though, well. Well, that's, no, that's <laughs> not a good sign. <laughs> Right, so obviously we've just done these two, which you wouldn't have been able to see. And then that is number three big end, and there does appear to be something rather exciting hanging out of the side of number three big end. Like something has escaped. So we are really beginning to think the man probably might have told his boss he realised and turned it off straight away. I don't think he did. So, what have we got behind door number three? Come on, out you come. Because you're going to be ruined, aren't you?
Oh, you are ruined. You do not want to budge, do you? Husk! Husk! Out you come! Ah, there we go. So what have we got here? Yep. So, basically, there we go. Look at that. So, on the upside, that is well boogered. That's so basically, they didn't. He didn't turn it off very quickly at all. So I would have said that there's a fair chance that that crank's a bit nasty, but that's not a problem because that's what we were expecting it to be in the first place. There are fudge. Look at that one. She's not quite as pretty. That's where all those. Oh, bits. Shrikey. That's where all those bits of metal came from. So, so that actually, actually has got the. That's got. Or, so or has it? Or has that just pushed it, squeezed itself oh, so I tight that it's. I don't. Well, we're not. We haven't the got the bottom one. It's gone. Ooh. So I think that might be an amalgamation of, of the, the two. two. They've just welded themselves together. Yes, yeah, so oh, I think. I think yeah. you find that that's that's two shells. And they didn't make them that shape, so one would yeah. assume that the man lied and he drove it till it stopped. Jeez. That's fine though, because we've got a perfectly good crank yeah. over there. Bye bye, let me put the camera back on proper again. So theory, Fudge, mm -hmm. we are pretty much where we expected to be, which is good. Would have been nicer if it wasn't, but at least they haven't driven it directly. I mean, that comrade and that cap is done anyway, so we don't have to worry about. Yeah. Yes. Because it's spun a journal, it's probably not an awful lot of good. No, it's a bit gougy, isn't he? No, I don't know. I think it. Well, yeah. Might clean up. I don't really want to take a chance. I've got some no. over there. So, what I need to do now is try and huzzah the. Um, I've got to take the front crank pulley off. The carrier, it's because it's got one of them blue tech go one way. Ah, uh, yeah. Crank yep, bullies, yep, which always yep. confuses the death out of people. So basically, this balance shaft carrier holds the crank in. Oh, okay. And then there's a gear pack back on the back of here behind all of this. So to get the crank out, you have to take this off this stupid cradle off, lay it all out. Yeah. Hozar with the big cradle. Yeah. And then that releases the mains here. Yep. And then you can pull it all apart from there. And so I can't you, remember can if you... Pull, can you actually pull it out without having to take the gearing case in a... Oh, I'm going to try a minute. I, oh, without looking back at a video from about a year ago, I can't remember. Uh -huh. And I know it's an arse of a thing to time back up again, but I have got the tool for it. So it looks a bit of a confusing... Uh... But to be honest, it's going to want... I mean, I think the bore's good, the pistons are good, because mm -hmm. it, it, it has done no miles, it's just been attacked by an idiot. <laughs> so, in theory, what I've actually managed to acquire is a pretty good engine, one that hasn't run, it's not here because it wore out. Mm -hmm. It's here because someone can't avoid driving over a signpost. Um, so what would actually cause that one to go like that, then? I think you'll find that when he knocked the sump off of it, be cool. Yeah, I mean the guy, the guy who owned the company was lovely. He was talking to me yesterday. He said he turned it straight off, and they put a sump on it, mm -hmm. and um, and it was all right for a couple of weeks. So I don't reckon you'll find he noticed as quickly as he told his boss, because he must have run out of oil enough to starve, to start the the one big end, wasn't it? Yeah. So it doesn't seem to have done one or four. We'll have number two off a minute, because I mean you can't nothing's. Burnt, and these caps are always blued. It looks like they've got really hot. Yeah. But they're always like that. I'm assuming it's part of the process of snapping them or whatever they do to break uh, them. Okay. Because you look at that and go, oh That's my lord, that looks like it's got hot and got a one colour. Seized. Seized. But 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 if you look at the ones in that one, they'll be exactly the same. Um, so we've got con rods. I think the best bet might be, might be just a quick engine rebuild. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think it's worth chucking a set of rings in it because I think he said it had done like 37,000 miles. 
it's going to want a very good flush because it'll be wearing we want that out of there the cams don't look to be damaged at all um, we did the 14 plate one I think before you were here and that had the oil pump had failed on that supposedly and that had done everything um, but the head was absolutely perfect so I think there's a trace of salvageable engine there so I'm going to whip these out these big ugly bolts out here a minute and yep. see if I can scooch the um, the balance shafts out it'll untime them but we don't care about that because um, the oil pump is here and this is yeah. genuine Mercedes one so he'll want taking out and cleaning um, and then it's going to want some better quality yeah that's a fair, yes, old, yes. That's a fair old amount of silicon wasn't yeah they it? did well there yeah. but I think that's easily repairable he says I think if I wash that through so that we can remove all the metallurgy that's excitingly been leaping around in it and what a shame that the garage who um, put the sump on it didn't have the nows while they were there. Pop caps off and have a look. Well, to, uh, to remove the pickup, because to be honest, I reckon you'd have saved that then. Mind you, though, we wouldn't be looking at it for 150 quid. So I still think well, it's it all bargain. depends, really, on, like you say, if, if, if Matey Boy will run over a sign, mm. switched it off straight away after beating the sump off. Cause you Matey, owned, Matey owned a rather expensive van, I still got a sign. Yes. He said the lad had the, he put that in the back of the van and brought it home with him. He could never quite understand why. Souvenir. Well, he said he didn't believe him because the sign wasn't very bent. So we were never quite sure what he hit. Oh. But he brought this road sign home and then I don't think he works for him anymore. <laughs> that surprises me, huh? Yes, yes. I'm so, surprised you didn't get a pay rise. Well, and a pay rise for, for destroying <laughs> probably what yeah, back. Nice little, nice little bonus, a house Which, in the Bahamas. Yes, because I don't think it was very old at the time. He said, I think this had been in the shed for three or four years. So if the van's 18, 17, 18 plate, it was a year or so old when he... Oh. And having 40,000 miles, I mean, they move fairly locally, I think. So to be honest, yes. But anyway, that might give us with a bit of stuff. Mm -hmm. Good six, well, it won't be a good 651 because they didn't make one. Um, but it'll be a working 651 that I can put on my treasure shelf over there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a collection. Well, I have sold some. Have you? Yeah. I've got rid of one or two. Well, I think I've got rid of two or three engines last week. Mm. Yeah. I know. Me six, me six, both two, two nine DIs is gone. So it's just why you've purchased a new engine no, to replace. Well, no, 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 no. That was, that's the <laughs> unbreakable <laughs> two nine Mercedes Sprinter engine. Which we were keeping as a spare. Is it gone to a good home? Yes, my mate Tom's got it because his one was making gallopy noises and had died. Oh. So as I like him, I parted with this quality piece of treasure that I had on the understanding that I get his broken one back because I don't actually think it's very broken. Um, it's just got a bit of an unknown history and mine was lovely and had covered 80,000 kilometres. So I was keeping a spare of the indestructible engine for free engines that I've got in vehicles that are indestructible. It makes total sense. It does. Luckily enough, I do have another one over there, just in case. Always to have a spare for a so spare. spare. Yes. Just yeah. in case. I have advertised some engines this week because I have been hoarding three litre Iveco turbo diesels. How many have you got? Three litres? Two. The spare and the spare for the spare. Yeah. And then I've got four spare gearboxes. So there's a spare gearbox, a spare for the spare, and a spare for the spare, and then a spare for the spare. Yeah. Because you need that. So I decided that maybe I have been putting stuff on the eBay's. I've even put the radio control boat on the You e have. You well, have. to be honest, I've had a giggle with it. I'm never going to get it. And to be honest, it almost seems a waste just to leave it as a shelf queen. And it's going to get knocked off and damaged. So I have decided not to be a child this time. Mm -hmm. Put it on eBay. It's on. It ends three or four days' time. Okay. So go and have a look. If you look radio control boats, you'll find our we are 6D diesels on YouTube. Enough. You can go bid on me. But I'll put it on 99p, no reserve. Never know, I might get me money back. And then I can invest it in some more treasure mm -hmm. of a different type. Yes. And then, yes. And then we've content. got a very busy week next week. So you have, you're off, you're off, you're off to Germany. I'm going to Germany. I'm going to Berlin. <laughs> so have you got all your papers and stuff sorted? <laughs> yes, yes, I am. <laughs> Me and Terence, we're off. So we're going to film that. That should be a bit of a giggle. 
Yeah, um, I do. Well, I do love Terry. He's good. He's man. good. So we're off to go and get a 1980s Ford. Back to the 80s, baby. Back to the 80s, baby. But we've got to. <laughs> Poor old ML's got to have a little bit of love. She's on the servicing turbos, swell flat motors. Mm -hmm. Going to do that this afternoon. I've had all the bits for ages, even though I did have to go to Mercedes and pay him a load of money for some more bets yesterday. Yeah. And we are, we are, all, everything is now here for madams, isn't it? Yes. Right, so I'm going to get back on the time lapses, which means you can go over there and make Capri noises. I'm going to make some Capri noises. Because at the moment I am limiting your Capri fixing because you cannot grind when I am filming. No. But that's okay, because I can just make stuff. So that blueage around the... Um... That's part of where, that's where the bear bearings are heat shrunk on the shafts. Oh, okay. They've all been like that, because you, when I first took one apart, you were like... <sighs> Mm. But to be honest, that Peugeot that we did the other, well, you weren't here, it was a year ago, exact same. Two litre HDI, so I'm assuming it's something to do because instead of like cutting the caps in half and doing some engineering now, they just snap them. Snap them. So I'm well, they, they, they used to do that with the old, the old Fords and stuff as well, didn't they? Mm -hmm. A lot of the American stuff. Yeah, rather than doing engineering because it's cheap. Yeah, it's yeah. just wrong. Well, and when you get it wrong, it makes a horrible mess. Yeah, it's Right, I'm going to try and take this out. Of okay. Right, so I have sort of remembered what I was up to. I need to remove the back gear plate, um, which is this big bit, to get this big bit out. I'll quickly whip the front pulley and the whole housing off, and obviously this is now floating free, but it will not come out past here until you take that out. So I'm gonna get this off of its um, stand and whip this off, find something soft to sit it on upside down. Take that bit off, pull this bit off, and then we'll have a look. We can hock this crank out, see quite how bad it looks. So I need to sit this on its top, and this bit is broken, because as you can see, it's got a big hole in it. What we're gonna do is just quickly whip through and pull these injectors out, because um, there ain't gonna be nothing wrong with them at all, because um, they didn't fail, did they? Losing things again. Hello. Hello. Let me just turn this camera off. How are we? Not too bad. Right, so we've, ooh, he said, moved this thing onto a little engine bench and um, undone quickly the back cover bolts because I need to be able to remove this back gear pack case to get into here to be able to lift the. Um, crank carrier out. So we'll just quickly tap on that a minute. There is the other 651 that we've had floating around for ages that has got a scored cylinder on number two. So if we just gently two more on the back here to take off, man. And just chuck that over there. That'll help, won't it? Let's do it with a ratchet. Pull this round a bit and sit it up on its cams for a second. Like that. Now breaking it all myself. Yes, it doesn't go any tighter, does it? Ugh. Come on, round you come. We should try levering on it rather than hitting it. There we go. <laughs> Lovely. We got any bits in here that we wanted to 
that. That's a lump of something broken. Hmm. Timer chain looks all right. Gear pack looks all right. Right, let's lift this out. Come down there. And our mains bearings have survived. Lovely. Right. Two more big ends and then we can lift the crank out. Right, so the lump of plastic that was lying in that timing chain a minute ago was a lump of smashed off rocker cover, so that's fine. We can cope with that. What we need to do is get all these bits lined up so we don't mix them up. So, number four. Number three we know is done. Let's see what number two is like because we haven't tried this one yet. Come on, where's me hammer? Let's give you a bit of gentle persuasion there. So number two. Ooh, number two had started to go as well. So number two is not very good. Number one, we've already had off, so we know about that. Yes. Did number two as well, Fudge. Not that's worry. I reckon this crank will grind. I might actually send it in along with that block because we're going to have that block polished up. The spares. And then, um, let's meet the final big end cap I had earlier. Put them in line before it upsets me. Uh, yes, number two, she is. A bit chewy as well. Huh? Ooh. He definitely didn't turn that straight off, did he? Yeah, I almost, I almost said, oh, fl Don't you, flipping, flip, heck. Flip, flipping heck. Flipping yes. heck. Try not to swear on the YouTube. No, no, no. Just doesn't. Uh, get these all vertical so I can lift, because that does. As far as I can remember, it's got these random anti-lashes on. I'll take that out, because it might as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Doing really well on losing tools today. Oh no. Well, the gear pack survived, there's no damage in there, which is good. He's clean as a whistle inside. He's going to want a bit of the gallery flushing out going on. Mm -hmm. Little sprung ended. See that? What's that do? Stops it rattling and chattering, I think. Oh. Mm, it's quite a complex engine, actually, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, there's, it was a good idea, but yeah, so you have to spring load these back. You put a pin in here, look. Yeah. And then load them back when you put them on. Pull the pin Pull out, the pin and then it stops any. I'm, I'm assuming it's anti chatter. I know no more than that. <coughs> and then wow. basically, this. He said it should lift out the top like that. Apart from it's a bit stuck to number two. She does not want to... Ooh, that didn't do that comrade any favours, did it? No. Look at that. So it did spin the journals. Does it work itself together? Yes. Ooh. Yes, the, uh, the journal is as one. I think... Oh no, he's coming off. Yes, that's slightly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't think there's many miles left in them. No. And uh, we don't think it did that any favours. But that crank's grindable. We shall send that to DNR James and see what they think of it. Yeah. Well, they'll either tell me it's scrap or they won't. So, let's all clear some space and pull that down. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. You're not playing Chief T-Boy again. No, well, as, as, as I'm just taking a little bit of a break, I've put the kettle on, I thought I'd make you a cup of coffee you're while I was making my sake, You're a good man. I know. Yes. Yes, so that, what we have managed to ascertain is that the bloke didn't turn this off, because actually she's pretty scored, look at that. 
Oh. Yeah. She ran for a while, didn't she? I reckon. With no oil yeah. in there. Yeah. The kind of, I don't think the crank's bad. Big end, the main, the main survived. Not that that matters, because we'll just replace them as we're here. The mains are all quite, yeah. Mains are all good. Yeah, a little bit of scoring on there, that. Anyway, so we want a full set of mains, full set of big ends, um, which is easy. We have a lovely crank in that one down there, which I'll strip out next. And then I think we're going to have to have the head off of it, sadly. Not that I, obviously that I have got a gasket, because I think that one's all right. So one, two. You make me run? I wouldn't risk it. No, I don't think I want to risk it. Yeah, some meat off of it, isn't it? So she's good. That one's all right. So two centre ones are junk. So basically we need to replace the comrades on two and three. It's not cannot I'll have a head gasket and a set of bolts. Left over from the last one I did. Because I didn't the last one had literally just locked up. It hadn't spun any of the it didn't spin a shell. That one's fine, Conrad's good there, isn't it? So we shall put that back together. And then the other two, I think, can go in the... Um... I wonder if a talented man can get a gudgeon pin out without taking a head off. Getting the rings back in might be a bit difficult. Mm. But there's a hole there. Just sort of. I know, I know, I'm going to have to pay for a gasket helmet. Well, I'm not going to, it's going to have to do that bit of extra work. <laughs> yeah, but the balls are all lovely. Nothing's happened to them. Pistons are all really clean. I mean, this engine's done nothing, is it? Just got idioted. Quite chuffed with my £150 purchase. And the fact I'm chuffed to family glasses and actually see what I'm doing as well. I left them in a completely stupid place. Right. So crankshaft, crankshaft, re grinding people when we get five minutes. That can go as spares. And then what we're going to do a minute is some. Um, uh, just go and sit this somewhere safe. We'll strip the perfectly good crankshaft out of the spare one that's down here that's out of your sight. And then um, I'm going to have to order some bits and we'll call that a day. So we're going to quickly strip the bits out of this one that we need. Now, I mean, there's a possibility this block isn't done. So what I might do, I'm going to strip this block down, pull the crank out of it. It's got a very minor scratch in number two, which is this one. Um, so I will send this block into our local engineering for people, DNR James, along with that crank over there. Um, see if this is savable or it is toast. And um, see if the crank will regrind and we'll get that back in with a new set of shells so that we'll keep this and the other as spares because you know what these engines are like, they go poofed all the time. I want this oil filter housing obviously for this one and, um, and I want the two con rods out of... Well, the con rods, actually, to be honest, I've got two other pistons out of it, but I need two con rods for it anyway. So we'll pinch the second-hand con rods out of these because they're absolutely fine. This engine did not mechanically seize it. melted two pistons due to having petrol thrown at it. Um, there's a fuel pump here that we can strip off and put in spares. There's an ox sensor there, and we'll just gingerly pull this down, put all the bolts in a box, because um, this will never go back together again. We'll wait for the next dead one to come in and then use the good bits that we'll have machined for this for the next engine in make another one up um anyway that's the that's the cunning plan so i'm going to go back on the time lapses and rip this into a million pieces and nick its crank and its con rods and then box up all the rest of it
So we're to a point now where basically we've stripped the good crankshaft, which is now <coughs> out of the other engine. I'll just sit him there for a minute. And, um, and the good rods. So what I'm going to do, I've got four pistons for the other engine. Um, I'm going to fish the rods out of the two slightly gammier. These pistons are lovely and fine. I'm just in need of a clean one. I've left them sat for ages. But I have two with the top slightly melted. They're not bad, but I don't want to use the pistons because I'm going to use these. I just need the rods. So, um, and then we'll go and order. Might as well have a new set of mains, a new set of big ends, some new thrust washers and then a set of new bolts, which I have in stock because I bought them ages ago for another one we were doing. Um, bought them in bulk, like you do. So basically, I've got everything I need to put this back together here, apart from big end shells and main bearing shells. Marvellous. So, Fudger has been bashing away in the back of here all day. Um, on a Saturday, because he goes capriing on a Saturday. Look at that. That headlamp bucket was completely shot. It had been horrifically welded up. All of this was missing. All of this was wrong. Look. He spent three days making that. He's even got his wing on here. He's a talented little becker, isn't he? If I spin you round over here a minute, because he had the same problem with this one. I mean, look at that. I know it's a bit glary in this camera light, but if I zoom in, so that, there was nothing left of this at all. It had been horrifically plated. He's made all of that and that. All of this lip was missing. I mean, he does like this Capri stuff. Look at that. And he's made sure, I mean, he's made the wing to fit because these pirate panels are rubbish. Um, that's pretty impressive. It's a bit of a Capri update. If I go round here a minute. So he's really cracking on. You see the wee lights last week? He's got the door lobbed back on. Minorly light. You've got the door lobbed back on and lined back up so it doesn't hang out here anymore like it did when the pillar was doubled up. And he's now making this wing fit because it's obviously being a pattern. The, pattern the, the panel isn't the best. But he is cracking on. Perhaps he will make brum 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 in the summertime. Now I've completely covered this piece of the workshop with bits of sprinter engine everywhere. It's about an hour later, two hours later, I had to go and do my ML brakes. There, there. All new, done. So, obviously, I showed you the crankshaft a second ago. I'm going to send this block off to have it machined. We'll send that crank off to have it machined. Those are the damaged bits to see if they can be fixed because these engines are quite valuable. I'm going to get on the tin to web. I've got a full engine gasket set. I'm going to check, but I'll just order some new shells because I think that's the only thing I'm lacking in. I've got head gasket, head bolts, pistons, everything. So we'll get back to that next time. I've also got to rebuild that big Iveco three litre engine, that sort of bottom half over there, which actually is in quite good nick. It's a twin turbo one. Um, but we nicked the head off of it years ago. You know what it's like. I've got another head, right one. So I'll do that for one of our recovery trucks. Um, it's all exciting stuff. So I'm just going to leave all this mess strewn here because it's eight o'clock on a Saturday night and a man's had enough. Um, so not the most exciting of videos, but there you go. I think for 100 quid, 150 quid, that was a bargain. You might disagree with me. But by the time that's rebuilt, Double checked over, it's done no miles. It's mint inside, just needs a damn good flush through to get rid of all of the mank. And we'll rebuild the crank, pumps, everything, make sure she's pucker. Um, thank you very much, Al, 6D diesels.